Looking ahead to next year, I can't wait till next year oh, already. Mate, mate. So I'll throw this one at you, Matt. Yep. Egan Bernal, Geraint Thomas, Chris Froome, all got tour wins still left in them. Thibaut Pino back, hopefully. You know, he's still only young, isn't he? Yep. Julian Alaphilippe, is he going to focus on the tour next year? Um, you know, we've got Tom Dumoulin, of course, going to Jumbo Visma. That's yep. the, what I've heard. Rolich, I mean, it, it, we're already lined up for Krajewicz. There's three Grand Tour specialists in that team now. What an amazing tour we got in, in line for next year. Yeah, we, we believe Mikko Lander might be going replacing Niblet Bahrain. Yeah. yeah. So we've got all the. There's a lot, bit of shuffling of the pack in terms of where, where riders are. But no, the Chris Froome one is is the one that I still can't get my head around in terms of what Ineos will do. I think a lot will depend on the release of the parkour for the Giro and the Tour yeah, in particular. They'll look at which one. Carapaz is that, as well. Don't forget. Yeah, Carapaz is going to be in the mix. But I've, I don't know. The feeling, G. I'm not saying he's going to get left behind, but I'm wondering what his choice is. Will they give him leadership in the Giro, for example, yeah. or will they will they focus on looking at the Tour course? Will they let Bernal ride the Giro? Maybe G go for the Vuelta and Froome for the Tour. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it it's would depend one. on the on the course. Well, I think G and Chris Froome have both still got another Tour win in them for sure. I think so. Yeah. Chris, of course, for a historic fifth, which he's more than capable of. I think he'll probably come back stronger. This this accident would have actually given him the motivation he probably needs to to come yeah. back and prove himself one yeah. last time, really. Do you, um, on, yeah. on that note, Brad, do you think that trying to put your trying to put yourself in the shoes of Dave Brill is a quite difficult thing to do? But do you think he just he wants to win another Tour de France, or does he want Chris Froome to win another Tour no, de I France? Think for Dave, it's about it's the putting tour, his pawns where they're best placed. So it's not about the person; no. it's about how can no, you I win think this it's race. It's about the team. It's yeah. about that team. I agree. Um, that's his job. I don't think he can get too emotionally attached to one rider. Yeah. You know, I've experienced that myself. It's about the team performance and the team winning. And that's what that's why he, someone asked me actually yesterday, how does he do it? I think that's how he does it. He doesn't get too emotionally attached to the individuals. It's about the team and putting their strengths best where they're placed. Yeah. And I think that's how they do it. Yeah. And again, that was a question I asked him the day before yesterday. At the start, I was quite direct and said, look, you came into this race with two leaders. Have you still got two leaders? And he kind of sidestepped the, the kind of question really. We're just getting some more drinks in. Cheeky little rosé there for about it. He kind of sidestepped the question and said, we're here to win the tour. Yeah. He, didn't, he couldn't answer because I no, didn't well, want I don't to reveal think he, their I hands. Think that's, someone's got to keep that level headedness, you know, and I have. think that's what Dave's so good at. Um, of course, he enjoys the victory. Of course, he's happy for the individual at the time, but he's good at reflecting and coming back and just focusing on next year now. Yeah. So why that person is maybe enthralled and wrapped up in the, the reaction in their country, say, in the fame, the elevation of fame, uh, the awards, the accolades that come with it, the people, the stopping, the people that want to speak to them constantly. Dave goes back to the drawing board, starts thinking about next year. And someone's got to do that, and that's what he does so well. I think one of the they had a press conference after the stage in Val Torrens yesterday. Both uh, Egan Bernal and Garant Thomas there. Dave centre stage, of course, and one of his and, and he, he did uh, he did mention it to me on on the finish line. But he said it was one of the most chaotic tours, very very difficult to predict what was happening. But what they stuck to a plan. They got first and second overall. Um, but his words were, which I want you to kind of like comment on, it was strategy overcame chaos. And that's ultimately what it was. Yeah. Both Egan remained calm throughout from what I could sense, what I could see. Geraint was the same. And obviously you need to because cy cycling is the most chaotic of sports. And, and when, when Dave B first came on, onto the game and was working with you in the Team Pursuit squad, it's all about control, isn't it? Controlling the environment, controlling yeah. things. And first off, winning on the road wasn't easy. No. But they've now got this kind of, I wouldn't say happy medium, but somehow that they, they managed to do it, don't they? They managed yeah. to control the chaos somehow. Yeah, it's controlling the emotions and the individuals. And, and Dave's very good at just staying calm, level-headed. Um, like I said, I said on TV the other day that the, um, you know, the, the sort of pandemonium of the cancelled stage riders, the frustration, the anger. Dave's just good at getting everyone back to, to level playing field and just saying, look, it is what it is. It's tomorrow's another day. And, and he's very good at that. He doesn't actually get the credit for it, to be fair, because people don't see that side of it, really. And, and Dave's just very good at detaching and distancing everyone from the chaos. And, and you see that come out in riders' interviews, actually. Uh, G said it yesterday in an interview I watched that he'd done with you, actually, where he said, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting home, and seeing my wife, shutting the door from this cr crazy circus. It's in daytime, to That's, breakfast TV. It's almost a, se a Davism, that, you know, that this is a circus. And, and keeping perspective and not getting drawn in. It's a bit like Twitter. You know, we were talking about Twitter the other day. Yeah. Once you go on it, you get, you know, kind of hooked on it and you start replying to people. And before you know it, you've been on it for three days and you become a sad person. And um, Dave's very good at seeing this for what it is. And this, that's how he's gone through all this turbulent time the last couple of years. He's, he, he's, he's a master of keeping perspective, let's say. I think you mentioned what what's go, goes on behind the scenes at Ineos, and we can't not dwell on, on 
on in this because they've just dominated the sport over the last few years, yeah. you know, and, it, and it's interesting to try and unpick well, how exactly they do it. parts of the sport. Yeah, 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 yeah I, mean, I, mean the tour, I mean the Tour, yeah. sorry, I, I do mean the Tour. They certainly haven't dominated the Classics, for example. No, but no, no I do mean not. the Tour, but halfway through the Tour, I, I asked Dave, what's been your highlight of the Tour so far? And I thought it might be Geraint's performance, like the Planche de Belfi, second in the team time trial, whatever. And he said, Matt, it was actually the, org- the way that the team organised going first off in the team time trial, the way that the staff behind the scenes made it easy for yeah. the team to adapt to a position that they don't normally have. They, they never really start off first in no. the team time trial because of what happened the day before, you know. There. So he said it was what we did behind the scenes in yeah. a very, very unfamiliar place for us. And he said that was what is the highlight. So that just shows the way he thinks. But he's got a great set of team there as well. I mean, I've been stood around with you guys this week, round the Ineos bus while you get the interviews and that. And I tend to keep my distance a bit. Um, but the amount of staff members that come over saying hello, and because yeah. there's quite a lot of staff that have been there for a long time. And a lot of these teams are only as good as the staff, but Dave's very good at motivating those staff. Um, and they are brilliant, and uh, they don't get enough credit, really. The riders obviously get a lot of the credit, but um, they are a brilliant team behind the, behind the scenes, really. So, Yeah, I mean, we, we say they're kind of clinical and cold and stuff, but you do... You, know, they, they, you see that, lovely, yeah, the staff yeah. are great. The riders seem seem happy. It was wonderful to see Egan Bernal's dad there mm. and his girlfriend there as well. There was, there was, a, there was real genuine emotion. And I know and Pete, our producer, was caught on his phone, Dave with Tim Kerrison yeah, doing a selfie that. of the podium that as well. Really it was all these nice little kind moment, of all these kind of moments. I mean, they are human, but they do things in a certain way. Yeah. It's about winning, and, and sometimes winning at elite sport, it's mm. it's hard. It's it's brutal. It's kind it of. Uh, it's well, I can tell you now. Tomorrow morning, they'll be planning next year. Yeah, they won't hang around and rest on their laurels, he'll be planning next year's assault of the Tour de France already, yeah. if they haven't already started that process. Yeah.